Amidst the tragedy in Haiti, there have been some stories of survival that are nothing short of miraculous. One of those stories belongs to United Nations worker Jens Christensen, who was rescued after spending five days buried beneath the rubble of the collapsed UN headquarters in Port-au-Prince. And right now, we'll hear that story firsthand. Jens Christensen joins us now on the phone from Haiti. Good morning, sir. Uh, good, uh, good morning to you. Um, please tell us, how, what was that experience like? I understand you were trapped for five days in an area the size of a coffin, as you've described it. Correct. I mean, uh, well, it, it, it happened uh, that I sat in my office in, in mid headquarters on the third floor at the time when the earthquake took place. And... Um, Basically, <clears throat> managed in the last second to to split second to get under the table and then hide under my desk, my office desk, so that while the quake hit and struck, I was under the desk, protected by the desk and by the debris um, that was absorbed. The energy of the debris was absorbed by the metal structure of my office chair of the desk uh, and of the small filing cabinet that I had like under my my desk to the left of, of, of me. We, um, we were just seeing some uh, images of you being rescued. How did you keep your mind focused from the time that the earthquake hit to the time you were rescued um, to get you through that? You know, um, I, I think you know, by, by rationalizing the, the event somehow and uh, really telling myself that don't panic. Mm -hmm. Don't go into a panic mode, but constantly believing that I would be rescued. Constantly believing that if I, if I made the effort to, to shout and to bang on the, on the, the, the table, um, the leg of the table and make as much noise as, as possible and take every chance that I had to make the rescue workers uh, hear me, that I would eventually be found. Um, and, and, and never giving up. Although, of course, I mean, after some days, uh, you also have to be realistic and say, well, I mean, maybe I won't have the luck of being found. Maybe I will be trapped here and, uh, and uh, be realistic about it, too. Um, but and always have the hope. Always have the hope. You heard those workers about 12 feet above you. Um, you're making noise. And when they're starting to get close and then they finally open that hole for you to be pulled out, what went through your mind? Oh, it was such relief. It was such relief. I mean, when I saw that the, that the camera came in, you know, and I could kind of wave to it, and, and the when, when the first uh, bottle of water they, they put the tires a bottle of water through a stick and hands it through the rubble in, into me. And, uh, oh, it was such a relief. It was, you know, the, the knowledge that I would be found, the knowledge that I would live. I mean, it was like getting a new birthday. It was really amazing. You've been through an experience like this before because you've mm -hmm. you've had the earthquake hit in Afghanistan, one in Turkey, one in Ecuador. Not necessarily that you were trapped, but you've experienced earthquakes before, and now you coordinate relief efforts. Um, mm -hmm. How is how has that those experiences helped you now um, with coordinating relief in Haiti? Well, I mean, I, I think that the the that I've had this stressful situation before and that I am, uh, and, and, and that I administrations have been in very stressful situations has helped me cope with the situation in a sense and and, and the experiences, the awareness of, of the stress that you can be susceptible to um, has, I think, made it easier for me to to rationalize it to process the the effects of this very traumatic experience and to a large extent you know being able to to function and, and really like I am now I'm working now again and I'm, I'm supporting the relief efforts and the coordinating efforts of the relief in in, in, in this 
terrible, terrible situation that we face in Haiti right now. Um, but my experiences and my my earlier um, experiences of similar situations, to a certain degree, I think certainly has helped me process and, and move forward. Jens, thank you so much for sharing your story. We're so happy. It has such a good ending, and we wish you luck in Haiti as you do your work there. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, Jen Christensen.